Welcome, Cedar Shoals. My name is Katie Kirsch. And I'm Camille Caldwell. And this is WJAG TV. break is here. We'll be off Friday, October 30th and Monday, November 2nd. Be safe and enjoy the break. On November 9th, ASVAB testing will be held for all grades. New members of National Honor Society. Induction will be held on November 12th. November 18th and 19th are the dates for Cedar Shoals Apply to College Day. Also on November 19th, we will be having Cedar Shoals Fine Arts Night in the Fine Arts Building. Come out to see Cedar Shoals students share their art, dance, and music. November 23rd through 27th will be our Thanksgiving break. Now, let's take a look at the latest commercial for the 2015-2016 yearbook. Hey there. What you reading? Uh, nothing. You know, I... I should probably be in class anyway. Bro, what happened, dog? I don't know, man. It just, it did not work. Like, did you use a line, right? Use the right. Yeah, I used the line. It, I did the move, too. Bro, you know what you need, man? What? Need one of these yearbooks, man. Got me all the girls. Does it work? Know. Does it work? <laughs> Does it work, a kind? Let me show you something. Any female you want, man, it's like it's like a prospect type thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like a like a scouting report. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, mm -hmm. who is that in that dress though? Anyways, though, you know, I had a last year, you know, yearbooks help. Really? I go. Hey, sorry about that earlier. Have you seen this year's yearbook? No, I haven't. Oh my god. This is amazing. That's me right there. Really? You may not know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. You look so much better in that photo. I can I'm kinda see really it. photogenic. Oh my god, I love it. Are you free this weekend? Of course. <laughs> Yearbooks will be $60 until Thanksgiving break. You can order online at bit.ly slash Cedar Yearbook 2016. Or you can see Mr. Ginsburg in room C207 to buy your yearbook today. An important part of our Athens culture is the unique businesses that offer services for a wide range of interests. Reporter Dakota Cox went to Dragon Star Hobbies to discover more about what the store has to offer. Dragon Star Hobbies, a small game shop located in the Ansboro Shopping Center, has been a regular hotspot for people of all ages for almost two years. They offer a wide variety of board games, role playing, and card games. There are multiple events hosted here on a weekly basis for all interested people to participate in. Uh, to be quite honest, we as players ourselves never had a good opportunity to play anywhere. Uh, a lot of the other shops out there are either inhospitable for play environment, uh, weren't friendly, bad customer service, and we thought maybe we could go and do it ourselves. And uh, so one night we said okay, and then we just kind of did it, honestly. Is there are several formats of Magic the Gathering, and we run tournaments for those most days out of the week. Um, we also do role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we do board games and board game demos. Um, other card games like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. Warhammer 40,000 is another popular one uh, as far as modeling and painting, tabletop board game stuff. Dragon Star offers prizes ranging from store credit to physical merchandise for most of their tournaments. The prizes is not much of importance to me. 
Um, the most important thing, like at going up to events back and forth here between here and other stores, is just having fun. Uh, throw a pitch out for Joe and Dwight. Definitely great customer service here. Uh, great guys to come and just hang around with and uh, come play some games with. Uh, they'll join in with you as well. Play those games. Uh, but uh, I think the, the number one thing here is the atmosphere, is uh, what everybody enjoys and stays and comes back for. The owners, just having a conversation with the owners. Visitors of Dragonstar Hobbies continue to enjoy their time at this thriving and unique establishment. Traveling is a good way for students to learn and familiarize themselves with other cultures, not to mention having memorable experiences. Reporter Jackson Danger Davis went on a trip to Europe this summer in association with EF Tours and has collected more information about prior and upcoming trips with this company. With over 500 schools and offices in over 50 countries, Education First Tours has a worldwide presence. Started in 1965, it has long been the goal of EF Tours to bring students a wider understanding of global culture and provide those students with cultural experiences in the form of trips, both within the borders of countries and across them. EF Tours um, stands for Education First, and they're a, a tourist company that books trips for schools, and they are based around um, educational standards, and they are primarily meant for students. Cedar Shoals has had multiple experiences with EF Tours, including a trip to Washington, D.C. in 2009 to the presidential inauguration, and a trip in the summer of 2015 to London, Paris, Florence, and Rome, among others. Additionally, an upcoming trip to the 2017 presidential inauguration is planned. A trip to Spain involving the Cedar Spanish Department was planned, but had to be canceled due to issues with the price. Well, we held an informational meeting about a trip to Madrid. Um, it was to be nine days, included 15 lang uh, hours of language immersion, which may have been a deterrent. Um, there was a lot of interest, but the price was a little high, I think. It was around $3,700, which is a lot of money, but at the same time, you had your airfare, your nine days in a hotel, numerous events um, that you got to participate in, two meals a day, and so we revisited it and found another trip, but it just hasn't, hasn't come to be for this year. Trips run by EF include lodging, meals, multiple payment plans for the trip, guides who are very familiar with the area of the tour and its history, and much more. Here's what Cedar teachers and students had to say about their trips. Above all, it was a really, uh, really good group, um, well planned out uh, schedules of events and things for us to go see. Um, the hotels that we stayed at were really nice. Um, I was, I was very pleased with what, uh, what they had for us at the, the trip. I thought it was really fun and educational and they were very professional and made sure that all, like everything was taken care of. I think, you know, I have pretty high expectations for most things in my life, and I feel that EF Tours not only met my expectations, but actually exceeded my expectations. Like, some of the hotels they had us in, I was thinking was going to be very basic, you know, but the amenities were awesome. Like, for instance, two of the places we stayed at had pools. One of them was like, a, like an Italian villa outside of Florence. It was just, it was amazing. Unfortunately, the deadline to sign up for the D.C. trip was September 9th. However, interested students should still contact Mr. Richards in room B214 to see if any slots are still available. Additionally, interested students should contact Ms. Millsap about the Cedar Theater trip to New York City. EF provides once in a lifetime experiences and all the students need to do is pay. Financial aid is available. Students should be sure to keep an eye out for the posters around the school so they know when any upcoming trips are. Sounds like some exciting upcoming events that you don't want to miss. Now we go to Alexander Venzel with the latest on Cedar Sports. Good afternoon, Jaguars. Let's take a look at some fall sports. First off, we have Lady Jags Volleyball. Both the varsity and JV volleyball teams completed their season 3-7 and seven in the region, beating Salem, Discovery, and Heritage. The JV team attended the JV Region Tournament and were defeated in Round 1. However, that didn't stop the team from recognizing their accomplishments during the season. We talked to Nin Youngblood about her experience on the team. It's been really great because um, our team is fun and we're energetic. Sometimes on the court we get a little down, but in the end we're proud of what we've accomplished. Either way, it's first a win or a lose, and I love all my teammates. 
The varsity team beat Heritage 2-0 in the first round of the region tournament and moved on to the second round of the double elimination tournament where they were upset by the number one region team, Appalachia High School. They then moved on to play Flowery Branch in a tough season ending game. Head coach Harry Buffard has some words for his team. First of all about the team, I'm very proud with the Lady Jacks. Volleyball is, is having a successful season and it's through their work ethics. I want to say that it's always good to be a Jaguar. That, like I tell our ladies that I coach, once a Lady Jack, you're always a Lady Jack. Teamwork is a major part of how these girls have turned their season around from last year. Camry Henson talks more about the importance of teamwork and fixing their issues when bouncing back from a loss. We, we use the word team a lot and we always try to work as a team in everything we do. Together we talk about what we did wrong, we talk about how we can better ourselves or what we should have did or could have done better. And we all just, we everybody knows their mistakes. When somebody makes a mistake, they know what they did wrong. So I mean, it's basically just a team thing, everybody makes mistakes. We are proud of the Lady Jags and congratulate them for their hard work and dedication this season. Great season, ladies. Makes me proud to be a Jaguar. Now let's check out the cross country team. The Cedar Shells cross country team recently competed in two major area races, the Winder Barrow Invitational and the Wildcat Dash. The team received fourth in both races, beating our rivals Clark Central by a large margin. Senior Jarek Wilson finished first place overall in the Winder Barrow Invitational. We sat down and talked to Wilson about the team's recent success. Reunited because I mean we come back closer and we uh we just we help everybody out. We always there for each other. The Jaguars are striving for a successful season. We sat down with head coach Matt Hicks to discuss his thoughts about the season and the dynamics of the team. Uh, last year we had our most successful season in 31 years. We went to qualified for the state championship as a team, and we knew we'd be coming back this year. Uh, with a strong set of boys. What has been uh, a pleasure and um, really exciting as a coach is we have a very large, um, talented, hardworking JV team. The cross country team has grown significantly since last season. The interest and dedication has paid off for the team through their recent successes. In the last couple of years, we've matriculated a, a large number uh, of girls, girls that we that had uh, been a part of the program for uh, four years and uh, were quite competitive and, and, and good. To close out their season, the team plans to compete at region and qualify for state for the second year in a row. They're happy to be out there and, and they're out there each and every day and they're working hard and they've made some great leaps and uh, they're, uh, they're going to have a pretty good season. And things are looking up and if everything comes together then we should uh, be vying for a chance to make it to the dance again. We wish the team good luck as they finish their season. Check out the other fall sports segments on cedarblueprints.com. And don't forget, the final home football game versus Appalachie is on October 30th. Come out, be loud, and support the Jags. Varsity basketball will kick off on November 13th in a scrimmage game against North Oconee. Come out to North Oconee High School to support the team. Here's the rest of our November basketball schedule. On the 22nd, the Varsity boys in an away game against Parkview, and both the Varsity and JV girls in an away game against White County. On the 24th, the Varsity boys versus Parkview away again, and the girls versus Grovetown. On the 25th, another Varsity boys game against Parkview. And that's all for November. Until next time, I'm Alexander Venzel with your Cedar Shoals Sports. Back to you, Katie and Camilla. Thanks, Venzel. Reporter Precious James has recently uncovered one of Cedar Shoals' newest clubs that offers students a place to create and share their own creative works. Here's Precious James with more on Partners in Rhyme. Miss Katie Johnson has launched a new club here at Cedar Shoals that is focused on different genres of literature and spoken word called Partners in Rhyme. It incorporates a diverse set of members who express their ideas in a mixture of forms such as poetry, spoken word, and even rap. Partners in Rhyme is a club where students who love to write poetry or write rap or write anything creative get to come out and we partner together and we celebrate and critique each other's creative writing. This program allows students' talents and thoughts to be expressed out loud. Ms. Johnson has recruited several students to become leaders in this new and exciting program. Partner in Rhyme officers Amara and Tyreek helped to find people that were the right fit for this program. We were looking for diversity. We weren't really searching for like something specific, but more amongst diversity. We were looking for both girls, boys, 
of every kind of ethnicity and that had potential, like raw potential you can form and work with and, you know, do multiple stuff with it. Come in and talk, say their stories or tell their poems or raps, and we're just working on getting better and see what their weak weaknesses and strong points is of their, their rhymes and poems. Ms. Johnson held and will hold auditions every school year to select talented students to be a part of this great opportunity. On September 14th of this school year, Ms. Baker held auditions letting students present their poetry in front of a panel of judges. Next year we'll host auditions just like we did this year where we get like our base amount of students. So this, this year 24 students auditioned and we took 20. Um, and then next year, but at this point, there's still students who are wanting to show up, and we don't have any problem with that. But the only issue is, at this point, if you audition, you need to come to the club with a poem or a story or a rap to read to the group. And then you have to audition now in front of the entire group. And then that's how you get into Partners in Rhyme at this point. Okay, I think auditions went well. The thing that, like, drawed me out, that made me want to pick that person was how they captured my attention. Did they have, like... Throughout the whole time they were reciting their poem, did they have me like hooked on it? Did they have, did they grasp my full attention or did they just have like something that was like, oh, you're good. Ms. Johnson has big things planned for Partners in Rhyme and a lot of things she wants Cedar to know about the program. Is right now we're working on a YouTube compilation, so I want to put um, students' raps and poems all into one YouTube channel so that I can kind of showcase some of the talent in our school. And then in the springtime, we'll be working on actually getting ready to compete in open mic competitions. <clears throat> but right now we're just kind of get learning. We're still in that stage where we're getting to know each other. And at this point, everybody's just been coming to Partners in Rhyme with like a poem or a rap, and they read it out loud to the whole group, and then we give them encouragement and feedback on that piece of writing. So far, um, Ms. Baker showed us this competition, or more like contest, that I believe Princeton University is having. It's um, across the nation just for high school students, and they want us to write an original poem and send it into them. Ms. Johnson is planning for us to go through Atlanta, you know, to like cafe shops where they do poetry and stuff like that to share with other people what we've been writing. Ms. Johnson will be sending out videos of the students' work periodically for Cedar Shows to enjoy. Be on the lookout for more things that Partners in Rhyme will be bringing to Cedar. Most of you know that our school has introduced universal free lunch for all Cedar Show students, but many of you don't know what it is or why it was implemented. Reporters Maddie Jones and Braxton Jordan found out more about this new food policy. This summer, Clark County School District instituted a program that will provide free lunch and breakfast for all of its students. This new program is possible due to a community eligibility provision offered by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This program allows school systems with a high percentage of students who qualify for free or reduced lunch to issue free meals to all students in the school. Um, it removes the stigma from the students that didn't receive free and reduced lunch before um, and could possibly have been embarrassed by that. Um, and it puts everyone kind of on the same footing. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, the number of Clark County students getting free or reduced lunch was 64% in 2003 and jumped to 82% in just 10 years. With more meal to serve, the cafeteria staff has more work to do. Yes, we do have extra food we have to cook now because we are having more students eat with us. They get it free. We can have some students that would not have come to eat with us because they didn't want, to know. They didn't want people to know what their lunch status was. So now everybody can come and eat. Especially with our students, that, like I said, that it's their, their main source of food. If a child wants to take that orange home to have for a snack later because they don't have anything at home, or if they want to take that Pop-Tart with them, I think that's something that we need to maybe look at. The program's benefits for students are clear, but there are potential unintended consequences. I, I think, like a lot of other people, I'm concerned about the amount of food that's thrown away. So maybe perhaps uh, the perception that since it's free, it's not valuable, and hey, I can just toss this. Um, so I'm concerned about food waste. Ultimately, the program ensures that all students have the opportunity to arrive in class and leave school well-fed. A bunch of breakfast all together after a while is pretty expensive, so making it free is just better for everyone. Thanks for tuning in to WJAG TV. Make sure you check out cedarblueprints.com for more exciting stories about Cedar Show students in the local community. Follow Cedar Blueprints on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook.
Until next time, I'm Katie Kirsch. And I'm Camille Caldwell. And this has been WJAG-TV. WJAG-TV.